Welcome to Verb Voice, interviews with leaders in the clinical research ecosystem. I'm your host, Rob Howey. My guest is Rhonda Henry, president of MS Biopharma. MS is a global full service clinical research organization. Rhonda, good to see you again. Nice to see you, Rob. Thank you for having me. We know there's a shortage of clinical research talent as well as a standard to hire those with experience. How has MS challenge that standard to combat the talent shortage? Yes, I agree. It's a challenge. It's an unprecedentedly competitive market right now. MS is looking at a combination of strategies to address the shortage, one of which is our benefits package. What are we doing to uh, cater to a very um, competitive market? And, and part of the differentiators for MS is our um, unlimited approved leave, which is unique, especially to smaller CROs at all levels in our company. The other strategy that we're offering is part-time part work. And this is to cater to non-traditional um, employees or ones that are um, have family demands that won't allow them to work full-time. The other is partnerships, partnerships with community colleges, universities, and um, uh, sites, academic institutions, all of which to build a bridge into industry, whether that be at our CRA level or at a uh, in-house CRA or a clinical um, research coordinator, all of which are positions that can be entry-level positions within MS uh, with the appropriate training and mentoring. You mentioned mentoring. Does MS have a mentoring program where you might, for example, pair less experienced CRAs with more senior ones? And if you have, how's that compared with sending CRAs out into their own, out on their own after their training? We do have a mentoring program. It's very individualized, recognizing that not everyone comes into MS or an entry level position with the same experience and the same capabilities to pick up on the job type training, so to speak. Some need more hands on. Others are able to take it and run. So we do give a, a, have a mentoring program that consists of both in-house mentoring, so with in-house responsibilities, as well as uh, co-visits with sites, whether it be co-monitoring, co-site initiation visits, uh, co-closeouts, whatever the monitor or the CRA needs to be successful. And we feel confident that they are independently capable of doing the visit on their own. You began your career, uh, Rhonda, as I recall, as a nurse and then became a CRA and held various project management positions before becoming a CRO executive. And based on all of your experience, you know, what advice would you offer qualified recent college grads and even healthcare laterals such as nurses uh, about a career in clinical research? Keep your options open. Do your do your research, so to speak. Talk to people in the industry. Talk to, to people in your chosen field, whether it be nurses or pharmacists or physical therapists, to see if that, that career is really fit for you. You know, it's okay to go into your career of choice, choice such as I did, and, and see that there are other opportunities there and to switch gears. And to be quite honest, I maintained an active nursing license for 30 years because I was worried this wouldn't work out. <laughs> um, but here I am now, and it's been a great career option to me that I didn't know was available when I was in school, much less, you know, when I graduated immediately. The Tough Center for the Study of Drug Development held a, a roundtable on the a correlation of CRA experience and performance, and you spoke at that event. I did. What, what conclusions did you draw from what you heard there? I think that we all recognize that there's an opportunity here to grow the next generation of CRAs or, or entry-level positions, and I keep saying entry-level because it's not just CRAs. It could be data managers. It could be TMF specialists. There's a lot of positions that we can train and support people into to those roles without prior industry experience. Um, but my impression of the conference itself is that we all recognize that this can be done, but there's much education and data needed to show that it's going to be successful, that there's no major differences in quality by taking a newly 
introduced to industry CRA versus one that's been in the business for two years and that they're going to have the support mechanisms to be successful. And in the absence of that data and, and reassurance of that type of mentoring and support plan, industry is still going to come back to, we want CRAs with experience, whether it be two years or one and a half years, you know, that may be, uh, that may vary, but everyone's reluctant to blanketly say that they'll accept lesser experience until that data is available. But your own experience would confirm what we've just talked about. That Absolutely. Connected. Absolutely. Yeah. MS has a really strong experience. And I think the other part of this, oh, well, strong experience with a, a client uh, over a 14 year period that's just been renewed for five more years. So five years from now will be a 19 year relationship using lesser experienced CRAs. So CRAs out of industry to support um, entry, entry level CRA positions uh, in an FSP model with this particular customer. And so these CRAs will be trained in those clients SOPs using their technology and following their processes. And the relationship itself will be governed by a service level agreement that's based on quality metrics. Mm, yes. And so we just had our um, quarterly review and all of the quality metrics were more than 90% above, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the qualifying target. So it's, it is a success and it can be done. I think the other key component is having sponsor buy-in or client buy-in. And so a uh, CRO and a sponsor can collaborate in designing this program to meet the needs of that project or that, that, um, that, that scope of work. Our guest is Rhonda Henry, MS Biopharma. Rhonda, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for the opportunity.